One of the things that happens with our hormones is that we become resistant to insulin. And this is when insulin approaches a cell and tries to turn the key, but the cell won't open up, so your blood sugar levels rise. That's basically what happens when you get type 2 diabetes. So what's causing that? Well, it turns out bad fats, the omega-6 fats from plants are the likely culprit, but so is not knowing how to sleep. What do you do about it? Well, you could reverse insulin resistance by practicing intermittent fasting and doing exercise, but not too much, the way you would learn in the fitness episode. If you eat the anti-inflammatory diet in the nutrition episode, you avoid a lot of refined carbs like sugar and white flour and stop eating artificial sweeteners and artificial flavorings, add in that intermittent fasting, practice some good sleep practices, and move every day and exercise a couple times a week, you might find that you've magically fixed your insulin problem. You could even go so long as to get a continuous glucose monitor like this one that lets you look at what your blood sugar is any time of the day. Then you know, is insulin my problem or is it not my problem? It's pretty easy to figure that out these days. If your hunger hormones are out of whack, and you're hungry all the time, and you think about food with half your thoughts, you could do the leptin reset that I write about. Every morning you start your day with between, believe it or not, this is from a study, 28 to 50 grams of high quality animal protein. So this is for one or two months because you're hungry all the time, because you have weight to lose. That's several eggs. That's a piece of meat in the morning or a good quality animal-based protein powder. That is going to completely change the way your insulin hormone works. And in addition to that, when you change your insulin levels, you'll find that your leptin, because this is a leptin reset, uh, leptin controls your thyroid. Your thyroid, which we're gonna talk about next, is the master hormone that controls your thermostat. So if your body needs lots of energy, you want it to, to burn all the food, if you have enough thyroid, you will do that. You'll have lots of energy. And if you're low thyroid, you don't have enough energy and therefore you don't have enough energy to get off the couch and go do something that matters. Thyroid's a complex hormone, but one that is off probably in half of people right now. I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's thyroiditis when I was 26 years old. My thyroid levels weren't nearly undetectable. And the first time I had prescription thyroid, I, I just remember this feeling, the lights turned back on. It was so dramatic. I actually developed a fear of not having my thyroid medication with me because it made such a difference. It was so precious to get my brain back, to get my energy back, and this was a part of it. In your body, you manufacture something called T4 hormone. And then your liver, your kidney, your muscles, your thyroid gland convert T4 into T3. And when your body has T3, that helps your mitochondria create electricity and ATP. So T4 and T3 regulate your metabolic rate. So the body says inside the brain, I think I need more energy. And it asks for the energy with something called TSH. It responds with T4, and if everything works right, T4 turns into T3, which then makes your body have a ton of energy. But sometimes there's a problem, because that T4 that's supposed to turn into T3 turns into a reverse T3, which slows things down. And that means it's like you put gas in your car, but some of the gas never goes to the engine, and you wonder why it's not working. And your body in response to that may raise your TSH. Your body will keep asking for more and more thyroid until it gets released. We can measure TSH, it's very affordable, and that's the first line, simple thyroid. If your TSH is above one, you probably have an energy problem and that's why your pants keep getting tight. And you can get that treated by a doctor or even use some natural approaches that we'll talk about here. The other thing that's just endemic if you're exposed to toxic mold, if you eat wheat and commercial dairy and lots of other things, it can cause your body to make antibodies to your own thyroid, which means you make less hormone production. That's called Hashimoto's, that's what I had. It's an autoimmune disease. If your thyroid's low, brain fog, depression, fatigue, and unexplained weight gain. And when you have low thyroid, it doesn't matter how much you exercise or how few calories you eat, you will not burn them. It's one of the reasons I couldn't lose weight after, after a year and a half of working out six days a week for 90 minutes. And I just felt like a failure. My thyroid was a major part of that. The other thing that happens is if you're on a low calorie diet 
and you're on an excessive exercise plan like that, or if you're on a long-term keto diet, or if you're over fasting, your body will lower your T3 levels and then your metabolic rate slows down. There are also environmental toxins that lower thyroid hormones. Things like flame retardants in your mattress, things like bromine in bread can be things that lower your thyroid. If you're over 40, your thyroid is already starting to slow down, you can supplement that to bring it back up. Iodine controls your thyroid function. It's a mineral and most of us don't get enough iodine. You can get it from kelp powder, which tastes gross. You can get it from seafood and eggs. And I recommend supplementing at a very minimum of 150 micrograms per day. I take closer to a milligram a day, which is about six times that amount. If your health plan will pay for it or you're ordering online where it's very affordable, you should ask for TSH, free T4, free T3, reverse T3, and thyroid antibodies. That's called a complete thyroid panel. If the numbers come in and say, oh, you're within range, but you're at the lower end for any of those, and you have the symptoms of hypothyroidism, it's called subclinical hypothyroidism. That means that, especially if your TSH is slightly elevated, that you probably will do well on a little bit of thyroid replacement, and you should work with a doctor on that. I, I just cannot, express how different it felt when I went on it. And all of a sudden my exercise started making a difference again. Before it was this feeling of helplessness where I'm just tired all the time. My career was taking off. I made and lost $6 million before I was 28 <laughs> and I was never so tired. And when I got thyroid back into my life, I started losing weight, but my brain turned on. So if this is a hormone problem for you, you've got to look at it. And if you're again over 40 or even in your fifties or sixties, Sometimes just a little bit of thyroid hormone makes you feel young again. It's an anti-aging hormone, so get tested. And it's okay to ask your functional medicine doctor about getting a prescription for thyroid hormone replacement. What you're going to find is that if it works, it's magic. And if it doesn't make any difference, then it isn't what you needed. By now, you're probably thinking about, well, what about the big hormones, testosterone, estrogen? Don't worry, we're going to get there. But your stress hormones are affecting your sex hormones, so let's talk about those first. Your adrenal glands sit above your kidneys. They make a majorly important hormone called cortisol. Now, you've probably heard that cortisol is stress. Cortisol is a bad hormone. Cortisol regulates blood sugar. It influences your memory and learning. It controls your electrolyte balance, and it plays a big role in regulating your metabolism. Cortisol is not good or bad. You really want well-functioning cortisol. So sometimes it should be high, sometimes it should be low, depending on what's happening in your life. It's when it's always high or always low that you get into serious problems. Chronic low-level stress causes your adrenals to pump out too much cortisol for long periods of time. So your body is always tweaked. You feel anxiety from cortisol. And after a while, your adrenals get tired of doing this. You run out of the minerals and the cofactors, and now your body switches over to low cortisol. So you're tired all the time, and you actually get infections like viral infections, sinus infections, and you don't heal well. When you have adrenal burnout like that, it feels like exhaustion, brain fog, lack of motivation, and just these really strong sugar cravings, which I definitely used to have. The most comprehensive test for cortisol function is called the Dutch test, like Dutch apple pie, just D-U-T-C-H. It stands for Dried Urine Test for Comprehensive Hormones. And it's relatively complex and relatively expensive, but it works. Adrenaline is related to cortisol and it's released when there's a fight or flight response. And when you have too much adrenaline on a regular basis, it messes with your digestion because your body isn't going to digest food when it thinks there's a tiger chasing you. So all resources go to fight or flight, not to rest and repair and adrenaline will lower your immune system function. So how do you control cortisol and adrenaline? Well, breath work, meditation, neurofeedback, adaptogenic herbs, and you can even check out the episode about recovery and resilience. And on Gaia, you're in the right place. 